Welcome into the Superior Dome in Marquette, Michigan, where the Ferris State Bulldogs have traveled to take on the Northern Michigan Wildcats. I'm Max Stevens, alongside my broadcast partner, Donnie Eden. Now, Don, this is the second week in a row that Northern has been matched up against a Division II juggernaut. That's right, Max. The Bulldogs rank sixth nationally and bolster the number one offense ranked in the entire Division II football. Now, if the Wildcats can pull off this upset, that means it'll be their first win against a ranked opponent since 2012. And of course, there's more than just football going on at the Dome today. And for more on that, we'll send it down to Callie Hunter on the sidelines. Callie? Thanks, guys. It is homecoming weekend here at NMU, and I will be speaking to some former Wildcats that have come all the way back to Marquette to support the Cats tonight as they take on the Fair State Bulldogs. And also be bringing you your sideline coverage for the game. Back to you. There's the signal from Day Turrell. And there's the boot. We're underway from the Dome. Caldwell from a foot and a half deep in his own end zone. He'll run it out. He gets to about the 20 before he's stopped. The Wildcats will take over just outside their own red zone to start off the game. Now, usually DeAndre Caldwell, he's a bit of a shifty guy here. Um, last week, of course, he had a couple good returns, and I think the week before that as well. Um, but this time, sped right at the 20. Mm -hmm change in personnel from the Wildcats last week. We saw the wideout Benjamin Lutzis returning the kickoffs. This week, Caldwell takes the opening kick. So here's Giles, the sophomore quarterback out of Illinois. Takes this one out of the gun. A halfback screen for Mayon. Not much doing that time as the first man to meet him out there for the Bulldogs was Adrian Green, the corner. Yeah, those swing passes out to the halfback just in the flat, they don't really work out too much if you have a, a very penetrating defense that the uh, Bulldogs seem to have here. This place worked best when we catch the opposing defense in zone coverage, but in that lineup, Ferris State, of course, was in man. Corners were right there, ready to intercept the screen. Here's Giles on second and eight. Watts over the middle, looking for Dixon. The throw was too high and it was almost picked off that time by the safety, Najim Hassin. Again, trying to create some uh, misdirection here that just did not pan out. I think the Bulldogs probably sniffed that out, no pun intended, pretty well here. Dixon, of course, was Giles, has been Giles' number one target all season long. He had the most catches in last week's game against Grand Valley. That time was just too hot. Here come the Wildcats on third down and eight. Wildcats not having a lot of success on third down this year, converting just 38% of the time. Giles with plenty of time. He wants the corner, and he's got it! Hauled in by Ryan Knight, the junior wideout. Now we gotta look at this offensive line. We gotta give them some love here. He had all day to step back in that pocket and just launch that one deep. What a throw and catch. An excellent play by Giles that time, who had all day to throw. He stepped up the pocket and made a play downfield. And of course, Knight, tightly covered, was being played very physically by the corner that time. Just made a play deep down the field. Here's the Wildcats on second and nine. Run pass option, Giles keeps it, and he's got a space up the middle. And he's brought down from behind. The touchdown saving tackle that time. Coach Nystrom in his second season as the Wildcat head coach, 2-11 overall record. Formerly a Ferris State assistant coach. He was on their staff when they reached the national semifinals in the 2016 season as Giles rolls out to his right. Makes one man miss, but can't get away from the second. It's going to be rule of fumble. It's bouncing around. No whistle yet. Still being fought for that time. And it looks like the Wildcats fell on it. And it'll be third down and an awfully long way to go. Giles made one man miss, and I believe it was the linebacker, Sam Habor, who got back there and knocked it loose. Yeah, it looks like Giles was trying to look past the uh, secondary there, trying to throw it to the corner a bit. And uh, pocket just collapsed behind him, got hit from behind, couldn't see what was happening, and uh, coughed it up. So there is the signal. It will indeed be third down and a whole awful long way to go. After the sack, Giles, of course, made one man miss before he was blindsided. He coughed up the football, and that's a devastating loss for the, for the Wildcats as it brings up a third down and 33. 